<laughs> you will find out something <laughs> from this blog. <laughs> Maybe. Hello. Hi. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, I've been working on pans on my secret curtain filled layer filled with red and more red and yes basically I've been having some technical difficulties with my personal computer it's been recording me but not my voice and now that the sound is working my voice appears to be coming out rather strange. And uh, I'm going to stop doing that ridiculous voice right now because it's really quite stupid. Um, yeah, I've tried to be a wee bit more organized for this video blog. Right, I have got a list this time, so bear with me. Uh, I will half disappear uh, like a magician. I've got Darren Brown's book, not quite read it all the way through, so not got those NLP tactics quite down or really read very much. That's it there. Oh yes, uh, I kind of said before, but the reason that I'm recording this on to DV directly, I'm just going to add a lot of steps, which are really frustrating because I'm going to have to record on the DVX100, the camera that is in front of me, thank you very much. Export from Mini DV, uh, well, put it onto the Mini DV, then import that from the camera onto my computer into Final Cut Pro. Once it's imported in Final Cut Pro, then I can go into it, edit it, get the edit I want, cut it up. Yes, I'm going to cut it, I'm not going to keep it real. Cut it up, 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 cut it up. Once I've done that, then it's going to be outputted to the correct format. Probably in this instance, I'll just export it as anamorphic widescreen 48K PAL setting, and then take that into QuickTime Pro. Once it's in QuickTime Pro, make sure that I've got all the settings absolutely perfect which takes a long time to figure out the optimum preset settings for YouTube, but I have been experimenting for a while. And uh, H.264 at uh, 640 by 480 and a few other settings seems to kind of work, although when you watch it in the new high quality that YouTube's got, sound goes out of sync somewhat. What are you gonna do? Uh, luckily, I have found other blogs online that, uh, that, that relay the same kind of problem. They've used, been using a thing called Compressor for Final Cut Pro, uh, which takes an eon to do anything. Not that I'm bitter against it or anything, but it takes ages to do anything. And then once you've exported it, you think, hey, I've done all that, and it doesn't even work. So, yeah, so that can be a bit frustrating. But anyway, I'm going through all these extra steps, basically because when I was using my webcam on my computer, through a th an application called Photobooth, generally really good, it wasn't picking up the sound, so uh, that made me want to tear my hair out. So, anyway, uh, I had done some amazing blogs, I'm not going to lie to you, made some fantastic blogs without any sound, so, uh, you know, for any... If I could have hired a deaf person or a lip reader or something that could have come in and written out for me, I maybe would have had subtitles, because that, in a way, would have been quite interesting, and then I could have talked about how I added the subtitles through uh, through the editing software package that I would have chosen to use, which would have been Final Cut Pro, even though I've got Adobe Premiere as well. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm going to get onto my list. Right. 